welcome to the July the 11th, 1989 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. This is our history tape number 98. As we take you back in history with those that are still living in Grand Prairie, Texas, and that are familiar with the many things that have gone down the pike. We're very delighted today to have a very special couple, Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Bell. And I want to welcome you all to the show, Charlie. Thank you, And B. Bell, it is a delight to have both of you all with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. All right. We want to set the stage for our interview. We're establishing your genealogical records. And let's start with B. Shall, Charlie, shall we let ladies go first and let, let B tell first. about her folks? B, would you look out into your camera? Mm -hmm. uh, give us the names of your mother and father and anything you want to tell about them with the full maiden name mm -hmm. of your mother. Okay. Right. My mother was Elsie Lee Stevens, or Young Stevens, All right. and uh, Hatley Samuel Stevens. Mm -hmm. That and, was your uh, parents? That's my parents, uh huh. Right. And uh, they had uh, 10 children. I'm right. the oldest of the ten. And would you like to name all ten of those, if you can, in uh, order? Yes, I will. Right. I have a sister, uh, I'm B, and I have a sister named Jessie, one named Jewel, and one named Lorraine, and uh, then I have six brothers. I have uh, H.S. Jr. and Clyde Marvin, which lives in Grand Prairie. All right. And uh, uh, a brother deceased, and Daniel Stevens, and um, Wayne and Calvin. I believe that's all of them. All right, and would you name your deceased brother so we'll have them uh, on the record? David. David is the deceased Yes, uh-huh, he all did. All right. Now, when Mr. and Mrs. Bell married uh, and gave us all of these wonderful children, where did you grow up? I grew up about, uh, oh, about 50 something miles, just a little over 50 miles north of here, at me, around McKinney. Wow. And uh, around Salina, I was born at Salina. All right. And uh, we lived on the farm, mm -hmm. and of course we picked cotton and done a little bit of everything. I helped my daddy. I was the oldest, and I could plow, and I I just worked like a boy, and I helped him. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, d where did you go to school? Uh, living up around McKinney, Salina, born in Salina. Was there a little country school you went to? Did you go to mm -hmm. one of the big town schools? Went to a country school. I started at Prosper, Texas. All right. In my first year. And then I went on up to the, a little further up in the country, and I went to Cottage Hill. It was just, was just mm -hmm. a little schoolhouse and a church house. How many grades mm -hmm. was there in the Cottage Hill uh, school? They went, oh, I'm not sure, about the eight, I think. Mm -hmm. It was a small mm -hmm. one. And, of course, we went to church there and just just plain old country farmers. <laughs> that was wonderful. Now, your mother and father's parents, uh, where did they migrate from or were uh, they Texans? No, they were, they come from Tennessee. All right. And uh, my granddaddy was a horse trainer. All right, which grandfather? This is Granddaddy Young. Granddaddy Young was uh -huh. a horse trainer? Uh-huh. Oh, good. And uh, they came from Tennessee. And they came in a wagon, and they moved down in East Texas. They stayed down there for, well, I don't know how many years. How, where did they settle in East Texas? Around you know? Emory. Around Emory, uh -huh. Texas. Mm -hmm. Some okay. of the folks still live down there. Uh -huh. And uh, I was the oldest grandchild, the first one and the oldest one. And They pampered you, didn't they? Yes. And my granddaddy passed away when I was five years old, and that liked to kill me. And, but my grandmother lived to be 90, 91 or 92. All right, and now how about your grandparents on the Stevens side? Well, they was uh, Texans, I reckon. I, I couldn't find anything on them other uh -huh. than Texans. And they lived around Quinlan. Mm -hmm. It's east of here, isn't it? Yes. And uh, they were farmers also. And I don't really know how many children they had. I think about eight or 10, though. They was a big family. And my dad was next to the oldest. Okay. And I, I couldn't even name all of those. <laughs> all right. We're going to let you rest a moment. And now, let's get to Charlie. Charles, S-H-E-L-V-Y, 
<laughs> Isn't that a wonderful name, Bell? <laughs> but always known as Charlie Bell in Grand Prairie, Texas. And if we called you those other names, they wouldn't know right. who we were interviewing, would they? Right. Why don't you look out and do the same thing about your parents for us, would you? Uh, my father, Frank Bell. My mother, Daisy Ann Bell. And uh, he came from uh, Burnside's, Kentucky. When he was four years old, they come in a covered wagon. Oh, he came in a covered wagon? Yes. Okay. And uh, my mother uh, come from uh, Savoy, that's up in the northeast Texas. I mean, she was raised or born around Savoy. All right. And uh, then they uh, uh, married and, uh, and uh, had six children. Okay. And uh, you are number what of the sixth? I, I am the next to the last. Next to I the have, last. I um, have a brother younger than me. All right. And uh, he is deceased. Give his name. Uh, Billy Frank Bell. All right. Then me, Charlie Bell, and then one just older than me is Euless Bell, which he lived here from uh, 40. Oh, 43 or something like that to uh, two years ago he retired and moved back to Westminster where we came from and Westminster where you came from is in what county Collin County up in Collin County mm -hmm. okay y'all are from the same neighborhood mm -hmm. you haven't named all of your sisters yet I have one sister Dassie Calhoun she lives in Plano all right and a uh, uh, brother that's just older than her he's deceased which is Marvin Bell all right and I have another brother, Roy Bell, that's been here since uh, 42 or 3 or something like that. And what does and Roy do? I saw him the other day, but we want you to He is retired. He's retired. Where does he live in Grand Prairie, Texas? He lives at uh, uh, 1634 Bird Street. Yeah, down, down in the Fairview community. Right, oh, in right. Fairview. That is good. All right, now you've mentioned everything with the exception of your mother's maiden name. We left that out. Uh, Edmund Daisy Edmondson. Edmondson, okay. Right. Tell me about the Edmondson. Do you know anything about them? Uh, they, as far as I can tell, are original Texans. All right, the ones that came from Savoy. Yes. All right. Uh -huh. And your father, Bell, came from Burnside, Kentucky. Do you know right. where his father came from. Was he well, a Kentuckian also? Yes, they they came from there when when he was four years old. They, they came from Kentucky. And where were you born, Charlie Bell? I was born in, uh, close to Westminster in Collin County. All right. And where did you go to school? I went to school, well, the first year I went to school to Sedalia, which was northeast mm -hmm. of where we lived. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, well, I guess I went two years there. Then we moved to Roseman, which was closer to home. Okay. And uh, I went to Roseman through the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Anna, rode a truck, first bus ahead. It's just a flatbed truck. I but rode the, it to Anna for a, How exciting. You're the first person school. we've interviewed on the show <laughs> that the school bus was a flatbed truck. It sure was. That's wonderful. That's great. That old mm -hmm. 31 or 2 Chevrolet truck with a flatbed truck. And, and Just I piled would, all the kids on the back of the truck. Right. Good weather, bad weather and all. That's right. They had a little tarp over it if it was raining. Mm -hmm. And when you went into Anna, uh, were you, uh, did you graduate from Anna? No. Where I didn't did you graduate. go there? That's all right. That, uh, I just didn't go hardly a year there. All right. And I quit and went to work. To uh, some of us had to do that living. for a living, didn't we? Yes. Uh, what, what did you do for work then when you? I just worked on the farm. Worked on we the farm? We lived on the farm. All I right. worked on the farm. Mm -hmm. Anything I could get to do, you know. You bet. All right. And of course, I helped on our farm and then worked on the other, you know, for other people around. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Now, how did you meet this lovely bee? Or is I was at, uh, well, I met her going to church. 
Right. I was already a church that had a church house and a schoolhouse. And, and where was this? At Roseman. At Texas. Roseman. Okay, you met her at East Roseman. East of Anna, Texas. All right. That's in, that's in Collin County. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, I was sitting down at the uh, schoolhouse when she walked by going to church. Mm hmm And uh, then I found out where she lived, and, and me and my buddy rode by there on our bicycles then. So I thought I might see her. And yes. So that, then I met her. Then they moved over closer to us, and I come home from school, and they was picking cotton, and I take them some water to the field for them to have a drink of water, and I give her a drink of water. You bet. <laughs> uh -huh. You were a smart cookie, weren't you, Charlie Bell? <laughs> All right. And so you met her, and you all courted and married in what wonderful year? 1935. 1935. <laughs> All right, now we're going to let you rest a minute, Charlie, because we want B to tell about the children. Uh, after you were married in 1935, did you settle in Rosemond or where? Uh, yeah, we stayed there, uh, right around Rosemond. Do you want to know how young we were? Yes, how young were you? <laughs> We'd like to know that. Well, when we met, I was 13 and he was uh, 14. Uh -huh. And we were sweethearts for two years. And my mother decided that she was going to break us up. We was, you know, she didn't want us to go together. Uh -huh. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so we decided to try to get married. So we got married in 15 and 16. Well, I don't advise it, but. You don't advise <laughs> it, but you all have lasted now. How many years have you been married? 54 married? years, the 27th of this month. 54 mm -hmm. good years. And I know your mother would say that was a wonderful track yeah, record. Yeah, she, she just really took after him. I mean, he was like her own child. But uh, we lived there, and we lived around there for years, and uh, then we moved over closer to Salina again, and uh, stayed over there five years, I believe it was, and then we got a chance to come down here to visit Charlie's brothers. So we just started looking around Grand Prairie, and we wanted to move down here and bring our kids down here to uh, raise them down here where the schools look better, and look like it'd be a better place to raise them. All right, now you've mentioned that the children, some of the children were born up around Anna or in that area. Mm -hmm. Name your children then that were born up there and oh, then Okay, the Rex, uh, Samuel Rex was born up there and right. well, they all three were. All right. Just right around in that same area in Collin County, all, all right. three of them. Samuel yeah. Rex is the first one? Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah. where is he now? He lives in Arlington, he graduated from uh, Grand Prairie High School. He okay. went here. To, uh, well, we was married 12 years, and he was 11 when we come down here. All right. And so he started from there, and he finished, and then went to Arlington College. All right. And uh, he's married to Name a wonderful wife. girl, Nelda. Nelda? Nelda Bell. Okay. And uh, he has two great children, we think. All right. <laughs> and the oldest one is Charles. How old is Charles? Charles is 25. All right. And uh, has a daughter, Bobby, that's 22. Okay. And Charles is already out of college and working with his dad in the business. It's a family business. They have a little business, and all of them are working in it. And Alton works with them, which is the second boy. All right. Now we're to your second son, Alton R. Mm -hmm. And uh, is he married? Yes. Then let's and name all of that good okay. stuff. Okay. He has... Uh, a son, the oldest one is a boy, and he's, uh, I think he's about 30 years old, and if I can, if I can remember right, he's right. married, right. and then he has a daughter, Teresa, that's getting married this uh, September, and then he has a little daughter graduating from high school. All right, did spring. you name his wife and his two daughters? Oh, Alara is his wife. Okay, Alara's his wife. And Teresa's his second daughter, All and right. uh, Stephanie is his third one, I mean, Stacy's the second daughter. Okay. <laughs> Did it right in a minute. All right. Then, I know that you have a beautiful daughter besides these two wonderful uh, boys, so mm -hmm. let's name your daughter. Well, she, she went to school here, too, and she married just before she graduated. Now, let's in give 61. her her name. Patsy Lee. Patsy Lee. Uh-huh. And uh, she married a Van Austin boy. Named? Uh, Howard Copeland. All right. And they have two daughters. And they live in Athens, Texas. All right, name the two daughters. Uh, Ronnie, Renee, and Kelly Lynn. All 
Okay, now, of all of these children and grandchildren, you've named one of your great-grandchildren, and I believe you must have another. Do you have I two have great two grandchildren? All right, let's uh -huh. name the two greats. Okay, uh, the oldest one is Derek. All right. And uh, the second one is, uh, well, uh, well, Dusty. Dusty. <laughs> Dusty. <laughs> Dusty. Dusty. Uh, well, when you nickname him Dusty, it's really hard it's, to think of their real. It's Dust and Ray, really, yeah. is what it is. Uh, right. And you call him Dusty, yeah. well. Uh -huh. that, and they live Perry. in Athens. Their last name? Perry. Is the Perry, okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's very exciting. All right, now we have you all leaving uh, uh, Northeast Texas, coming down here to see Charlie's brother that lives in Grand Prairie, Texas and uh, decided you might look the place over. What'd you find when you came down here, Charlie? Well, I found a job. Oh, right, that was good. <laughs> All right, tell which, us where you went I to work. Which I didn't have up there. All right. I went to work for Lone Star Gas Company. All right. And uh, I worked there for nearly 30 years. All right, what year did you go to work for the Lone Star Gas and, and, and name drop some of the people that were I in charge? I went to work in in September 47. of 1947. 1947. Uh, Louis Halsey was the manager there. Hub Jarrett was the foreman. And uh, Buck Zuspin, uh, uh, Hub Jarrett and Buck Zuspin still live here. Yes. And uh, Buck was the uh, serviceman. Then there was Jack Driscoll that worked in and uh, when I went to work, it was the four of us is all there was. So Jack and I took care of the, the new service that, you know, when people wanted service, we took care of that and installed the appliances that they bought and, and um, read the meters. You were the installation person then for the Lone Star Gas Company? That's what we had. We was <clears throat> it. Four of us. Where was the Lone Star Gas Company located when you went to work for them? It was uh, under the lodge hall, Samar Hamilton Lodge, where the uh, where the Grand Prairie office, office is? supply is. Where? The south side of that. And that was the Lone Star Gas Company. Yes. And then after it was there, where did it move to? Uh, well, now we built a <coughs> warehouse down on uh, Southeast Third Street. All right. And moved everything down there but the office, and it stayed there. And then they built a new office over on Church Street, mm -hmm. where Roy Reed's grocery store used to be. All right. And, uh, of course, it's still there. Okay. Now, the Lone Star Gas Company, you started out as a service person. Of all of the 30 years that you worked for the Lone Star Gas Company, did you continue in service, or did you do something else for no. them? No. Uh, I went, well, now that was the, uh, I went to the service department, you know, service and appliances, and I don't know how many years that I serviced appliances, and I'd come out and adjust people's stoves and stuff like that, and then mm -hmm. charge a dime for it. See, it worked mm -hmm. day after day that it didn't collect a dime. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Then I went to, uh, uh, foreman over the crews, you know, laying the lines and what have mm -hmm. you. And then I went to the service foreman. Then, oh, we went, well, then we went from, we went to Arlington, Irving, Grapevine, Keller, Roanoke, and Hearst, and places like that, and run lines, you know, when they need a ditch dug across the street, well, we did mm -hmm. it. So. Mm -hmm. We had a few more right at that time when we was doing that than we did when we started. And, and you retired in what year from the Lone Star Gas? In 1976. All right, and who was over uh, the Lone Star Gas then? Doyle McKinney. Doyle McKinney. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Um, uh, the Lone Star Gas Company gave you an opportunity to work out in the community a lot. Were you in any of the clubs like Lions or Rotary or Optimist or anything like that? Did they allow you to do community service in that direction? Well, they they would have, yes. Uh, I belonged to the Samar Hamilton Lodge. All right. And uh, I was a 
volunteer fireman for 21 years during this time. How wonderful. And uh, that, that just about kept me busy. It certainly did, yeah. being serviceman <laughs> up all clear to Salina and around. And while he was doing all of this, B, did you ever work out of the home, or were you strictly a, a homemaker? No, I had to work and take care of the kids. All right, tell <laughs> us what you did. Look out and tell us your well, working career. I worked in a sewing factory for a while, and then I worked at uh, down at Watson's department store, mm -hmm. and I walked, worked at Penny's and Sears. And uh, I was working at Penny's, and I got sick and had to have surgery. So I, when I got through with that, the kids talked me into going to beauty college. Wonderful. So I went to beauty college and finished my school and mm -hmm. uh, was a beauty operator for the rest of the time, up till the last two or three years. That's wonderful. And then you retired as a beautician, mm -hmm. and you led a wonderful career along with Charlie. I had to. <laughs> yes. Know the feeling when you have boys and girls in yeah. school. Um, tell me this, uh, B. Did you ever have? Did you ever belong to any clubs or churches or PTAs or anything like that? You'd well, like to talk about? I didn't belong to the PTA down here because I was working such odd hours, you uh -huh. know, at stores. Mm -hmm. But uh, belonged to the First Baptist Church and the Order of Eastern Star, and that's just about it. Okay. In but the way of clubs. That kept you pretty busy. It didn't sure it? did. Well, uh, for the First Baptist Church, did you teach any classes, or were you in a department of some sort? Uh, well, no, I didn't there. Now we went to Eighth Street Baptist for a while. I did teach the small children there, mm -hmm. and uh, but I haven't since we've been in First Baptist. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Let's come back to Charlie. Um, Charlie, since you've been in Grand Prairie, there's been lots and lots of changes. When you first came to town. Um, where did you all live? We lived on Southeast 15th Street. Southeast 15th Street. Uh, That's down the other, right to the other side of Graff Chevrolet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There was some little houses back on that street. Yes, there, there. was. Uh, before you get to Twin Airports, down in that right. area, the, uh -huh. uh, we had several people that uh, went to Jefferson Middle School from down in that area right. when our kids went down there to school. And after you uh, moved from uh, Southeast 15th, then uh, where did you migrate to? We moved to Southeast 3rd Street and stayed all oh, six months, I guess. Mm -hmm. Then I bought a house over on Choctaw Street. Mm -hmm. Down in the Indian Hills territory. Uh, uh -huh. I stayed there five years and uh, moved to uh, Northwest 22nd Street, I bought a new house there. Mm -hmm. Then we stayed there 11 years and I moved to Clare East Street mm -hmm. and stayed five. five years. Then I now live at 333 Barron Street where we've been for 19 years, mm -hmm. I guess. And like it very much. Yes, yes sure do. Now, I know that I see both of you all when we go to the AARP and when any place in town, when there's a special musical group in this city that um, gives us uh, a lot of enjoyment. And besides that, you have a band of your own. Now, we, first of all, we want you to tell everyone in the viewing audience about playing with the Sunshiners and then the spinoff that's come from that with your group that plays with the band. Do that. Well, I've, I've been playing with the Sunshiners for four, four, years. four years. And uh, we practice every Monday night, and then we go places during the week and play for the homes and uh, retirement centers and, and places like that. Have you told us what uh, musical instrument you play? No, I play the guitar. Not very good, but I play it. But, <laughs> and you're uh, one of their soloists? Yes. Yes. All yeah. right. We know that you spend lots of time. And B, do you go with him on all of these songs? All the time. <laughs> do, or do you play with the band like the tambourine or anything, or you just pat no, your foot? No, I with just them? pat my foot and, and pat farm. <laughs> oh, that is that takes a lot of your time, doesn't it? Practicing and and giving your uh, recitals. Yes. Then, uh, both of my sons and a friend of mine has a band. Then. Why don't you name both of your sons one more time and your friend that make up the band? Rex Bell, Alton Bell, and Jerry Blackwell, who works for the gas company now. Okay. And uh, we practice our play somewhere on Tuesday night. Yeah, every Tuesday night we. 
practice in Rex's office in Arlington, mm -hmm. or we go somewhere and play. Now, every Tuesday night this month, we have somewhere to play. Mm -hmm. Well, I Saturday. don't think you play hard rock, but tell us what kind of music you play <laughs> so that everyone in Video Land, if they ever need Rex Bell and his band to play, it's will know what. Country and Western music. Country and Western. Do you do any gospel music? Yeah. Yes, we do. A little gospel mm -hmm. along with it. Okay. I love to do gospel music. Mm -hmm. What is it like to, uh, to be retired and yet have almost a full-time job as far as your musical career is concerned? <laughs> if you have anything that you want to do, you better do it before you retire. Because <laughs> <laughs> then after you retire, you won't have time to do it. Oh, that yeah. is great. But I fail to tell you that when I retired from the gas company in 76, mm -hmm. I went to work for the city of Grand Prairie and worked till 85. All right. What did you <laughs> do with the city of Grand Prairie from 76 till 1985, Charlie Bell? Uh, part of the time, I uh, helped fix water leaks and mm -hmm. anything they had to do. You were a troubleshooter? In the last five years, I was the pumper. I was responsible for the city's water mm -hmm. for the last five years that I worked mm -hmm. for the city. So you have now retired at least twice or three times, mm -hmm. and you're into a musical career. <laughs> Are y'all planning on cutting any records or, or doing any concerts or anything special? I doubt if we'd be that popular, but anyway, mm -hmm. we must make tapes of ourselves, see, but we mm -hmm. don't. So far, we haven't. Well, of all of the people that you've been associated in your career, since you've, especially since you've come to Grand Prairie, either through the gas company or through your service at Grand Prairie or whatever avenue that you've worked in, name drop a few people that have given you a, a, a real opportunity to express yourself and who inspired you to do good things other than B, maybe? Well, it's just uh, uh, people that I'd meet you know, and, and get acquainted with, and, and uh, just, uh, I don't know, just joining the, the band, and just, you go to the homes and places and play for them, and it, it does them so much good that you say, well, it's, you know, it's got to be good. That is a sort of ministry for you, yes, isn't it? Uh -huh. An outreach for you. Yeah. How often do you all go to the homes, uh, for the aged? We go uh, ever the second Tuesday night in every month we go to Dalworth mm -hmm. and uh, of course we always have somewhere else to go like the next Tuesday night we go into Arkansas uh, Retirement Center mm -hmm. and then the next Tuesday night we're going to the Masonic Home in Arlington and the next mm -hmm. Tuesday night we're going the next Saturday night we're going to Sherman to play then. Mm -hmm. Now, B, do you, and you go along on all of these trips out of town. Uh, does he have you polishing the guitar, or do you have anything special you'd no, like to say in the I last just, minute we have on the show? He starts to make his program up. He said, Mama, now sit down, and you write it while I tell you what to write. Uh huh. And so I do that, and, of course, I enjoy seeing the people enjoy the music and all, you know, they can't get out the shut-ins and all. And But they've got... He didn't tell you they had about 10 different times this month that they're going. Playing concerts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's worth it all when you go out there and those people can't get out of the rooms, you know, or can't get out of the uh, home and see how happy it makes them and all. So I just go on with him. And that gives, yeah. you, that gives you a good feeling, too, to know that you've made a contribution to yeah. help that. We have about one more minute before we wind this down to the end of our tape. Is there any last thing you'd like to say about how you've enjoyed living in Grand Prairie and you plan to spend the rest of your days here? Look out and tell Grand Prairie, Texas that, would well, you, Charlie? Uh, so far, I haven't found a better place to live. And, and I plan to stay here the rest of my time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I've really enjoyed living here and the people, uh, that I met when I first come here was wonderful people. And Vernon Jackson was one of them. He'll appreciate <laughs> that. He'll love that. He sure was. Well, I want to thank both of you all for taking the time this afternoon to come and be with us. 
and to open your lives up to us and tell us about the history of the Bells while they're here in Grand Prairie, Texas, and we're looking forward to many more years of productive musical <laughs> accomplishments from both of you all in the community and want to thank you for your time. It's our pleasure. Oh, it's just thank been a delight you. having both of you all thank on. Thank you. you. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.